obviously it's a very unique setting where you take a prison and turn it into an art setting. And then you think in terms of the, the scope of the arts, the wide range of arts that we have here, and the potential for this to become a very significant regional destination, if not perhaps a national destination. And the most common statement we hear from people that come here the first time is, I had no idea. It's a beautiful place with a fascinating history, and originally it was a very positive place. It was built in the style of a college campus the high watermark of progressive prison reform in the United States. The prisoners actually made the bricks that created the workhouse. The way that the workhouse is designed, everything is very open. So when you walk into a building, um, you're going to see all of these rows of studios lined up, bright lights, everything's lit up and exciting. People are in their studios, doors are wide open. The Workhouse Art Center is coming at a perfect time because it serves as an anchor for the community growing around us. And this is a, a tremendous opportunity, not just for us to have an art center, but for us to really revitalize the South County part of Fairfax County. It's kind of given folks here in Lorton a new place to come, a new place to gather, uh, some new activities to take part in. We started offering performances regularly beginning in January of 2012, and we were selling out performances. I love meeting people for the first time when it's their first time here because I want to show them around and brag and say, look at all this cool stuff we have, you know. Anything from art of movement, Pilates, Tai Chi, to glass, to ceramics, to paper making, drawing, painting, it's a very big menu. You know, people enjoy an environment like the workhouse where the fine arts and crafts come together. It's the arts that promote creativity. And isn't creativity the cornerstone of our success? The workhouse is a 55-acre campus that's part of uh, the Lorton Reservation. This is a place that is a special spot for one of the great civil rights movements of the 20th century, which is suffrage. A number of them, of the most prominent leaders, were arrested and brought here and confined at the workhouse. The amendment was passed and women came to vote. This was a watershed moment, uh, like Martin Luther King in the Birmingham jail. Uh, the workhouse was planned under the Roosevelt administration, Theodore Roosevelt. It's a, now a National Historic Register landmark. Historic buildings have what we like to call embodied energy. So there's energy that went into making the steel, making the bricks, and that energy has already been expended. Keeping that embodied energy that's already been expended in a building and not having to generate new energy is an important sustainable practice for us. When people walk into the Capitol building, you get a rich sense of history, and you can see uh, the history of our country that's played out through not just the architecture, but the artwork as well. It's much like the Workhouse Arts Center, where there's a rich history there that's brought forth in this new use in that building. Unlike you know, many prisons, it was set up more like a dormitory style. And there's wonderful natural light that comes into the studios. So each of these eight buildings were turned into artist studios. In three of the buildings, there's what we call our focus programs, in glass, ceramics, and fiber art. And all in total, there's, there's uh, 80 studios, and artists working in all different kinds of, of media. This is the McGuire Woods Gallery, and it's uh, 3,200 square feet of space, and uh, you know, it has professional lighting and can be configured in many different ways. And uh, you know, we focus on uh, cutting-edge contemporary art, the fine crafts, as well as uh, community collaborations, and that being from universities to K through 12 to senior citizens and, and beyond that. So it's a, it's a really exciting time here at the Workhouse. I think that the experiences people have when they are here it, are exceptional, both in terms of the visual artwork, uh, the music concerts that we were doing outside, the theater, the comedy. You know, it, I think we get a lot of return guests. Uh, one thing that we have been offering regularly here is um, what we call date night, where the folks that are attending uh, will, alongside with a culinary instructor, cook the dinner and then enjoy it all together. 
Um, another thing that happens on that same night is we do have a ballroom social dance, which happens up here in the main gallery. It's led by a professional ballroom instructor who also teaches here. Uh, there's a little mini lesson that happens before the dance, so you can brush up on uh, the tango or something, and then uh, the, the dance itself will encompass many different styles. We've got uh, the, the comedy nights have been very popular. We're seeing everyone from people in their 20s are coming, people in their 60s are coming. There's every demographic, every walk of life. Uh, we have a cabaret series that we're just about to embark, um, as well as uh, dance concerts, music concerts, and uh, outside uh, theater groups coming in to perform. In September, we're having a workhouse open house, and that focuses on, our, on the education element of the workhouse. We have many wonderful visual and performing arts classes. Folks will be able to come that day, meet the instructors, actually participate in some of the activities, and they can bring their children and themselves, because we have classes for children and adults, and um, get a little taste of what we have to offer. So many different mediums of classes that we offer here. It's unprecedented. We have eight different Pilates reformer machines, um, and those classes are constantly filled. And they're, I mean, they're, they're state of our equipment. Just to take one program at a time, you could say in, in ceramics, we have beginning intermediate ceramics in wheel throwing, we have it in hand building, we have it in uh, sculpture making. Uh, beyond that, in glass, we have also all the glass methods under one roof, which is really exciting. You have cold working, infusing, uh, casting, working in glass blowing itself. To have all of that under one roof is very rare in a glass program. And the sheer experience that we have, what they bring to the table and the knowledge that they bring, is, is just, it's beautiful. And the students really benefit from it. We work with the school systems in many ways through our education department as well as uh, many of the local daycares come here to visit us as well. Our partnerships help give us new participants. They bring new participants and new individuals here to the workhouse and help us grow our community. We work with Smart Markets and Jean Jensen um, and that brings to us a number of people who have never come to the workhouse before. Now they've come to visit the, the uh, farmers market and they've now become fans and students and volunteers for us. If I were going to describe Fairfax County, I would say that our community is an engaged community. We're a community of, of people who are curious, who are bright, who like to roll up their sleeves and make things happen. Uh, we also are very business friendly. We have George Mason University that is a thriving university and a thriving presence and a partner to the workhouse. Fairfax County has been investing in making sure that we're stabilizing the buildings, stabilizing the infrastructure. Eventually, we would like to see the arts center here uh, become self-sustaining. We look toward a business model where a significant portion of the money will be generated within our business model by our activities on the campus. When you think in terms of capital investment, like major renovations of buildings, that's where we get into the issue of needing to have significant corporate contribution with, with in all fairness, an opportunity for those corporations to have high visibility uh, by naming rights and other privileges associated with the naming of a building. We plan a 300-seat theater. Uh, there you would have not only the naming obvious as you approach the theater, but everything in the theater that we do in the way of productions would acknowledge that contribution. And the second building that uh, needs to be finished is what was formerly the mess hall here, which has 22,000 square feet with about 10,000 square feet of open space with no pillars in it, which will be a marvelous event center. And then there's the amphitheater. We look for, forward to creating an amphitheater that would seat about 1,000. So when you think about 20, 25 years of acknowledgement of a contribution, and the tens of thousands of members of the public who will be, see that and be aware of it, then it begins to be an investment that a corporation might be interested in. When a business is looking for engagement with a local community institution, and I have a business, uh, we look for something that has durability, visibility, presence, significance. I like to, number one, have something that I'm proud of, and something that represents and stands for something. The idea of making people better and the idea that the arts themselves and the performances that occur and the creation that takes place here also makes people better people. 
in schools, the grades go up when there's arts opportunities. I think when young people are exposed to live music, live theater, going to an art gallery, it opens up a different part of your brain and gets you to think in a different way. And oftentimes, even in business, being creative is the difference of making a successful business or an unsuccessful business. We often talk about the STEM to STEAM concept. Everyone knows the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics curriculum, but we've got to get the A, the arts, and we have to turn that STEM program into a STEAM program because it's the arts that, that build this rich history in our country. It's important to have balance in our lives, and it's important as a county, it's important for the Board of Supervisors and the school board to make sure that all of those opportunities are available. So coming to the workhouse, seeing what we can offer and showing support by taking a class or donating a dollar or becoming a member or coming to an event that we offer. At that, even those little things, those little methods are just your way of contributing to the creative mindset of the community.